Peter, you absolutely nailed the failure of quarantine. You told us a week ago that quarantine was medieval. Have we failed at quarantine? Yeah, it looks that way. It looks like we're seeing uh, now trans significant levels of transmission in multiple parts of the world. Uh, as you pointed out, we've got it now uh, in, in northern Italy. Uh, it's in uh, Iran, and they're talking about 12 deaths in Iran, which if you believe the case fatality rate of 1 in 50, that probably means we're, we're upwards around 1,000 cases uh, in Iran. It's in Afghanistan. Uh, we know about this morning, and of course, a big epidemic underway in, in Korea. So the World Health Organization has not officially declared this a pandemic uh, yet, but I would imagine that could easily happen uh, in, in the coming weeks. And so and we have to be prepared about the United States. So this is going to be a significant uh, 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 epidemic, pandemic, and something we're going to have to get figure out how, how to get our arms around. Peter, we rationalized Wuhan up the Yangtze River to so many listening and watching in the middle of nowhere. Milan, Italy is not in the middle of nowhere. Do you envision today and in the coming days constrained travel in Italy, across continental Europe, and for that matter, in Seoul, Korea? Well, I think people are struggling with, with how to respond. So yesterday, the border uh, with Austria, the train between uh, northern Italy and Austria was closed for a while, then that was opened. Uh, there were discussions about whether to do this with France or Switzerland. So, yet, yes, I, I could easily envision that. I don't know that it would have much of an impact uh, in terms of preventing the spread of the epidemic, but you can imagine uh, the level of instability that will cause, and I think that's why we're starting to see, and of course I'm not an economist, but I think that's why we're, we're starting to see declines in some of the European uh, stock markets uh, this morning. So, so I, I'm very very worried, uh, not only from a health perspective, but from a global stability and economic perspective as well. Right, but if we focus first on, on the virology of this, uh, doctor, your expertise, Dr. Hotez, what do you know? I mean, how do you stop this? So because we're very limited in terms of data and because we know that you can spread it without really having any symptoms, how, how do you deal with it? Well, the, the, the only way we deal with it right now is, remember, we, we don't have a lot of good technologies for this, and we could discuss why that's not at hand. We still don't have a vaccine ready to go, and the diagno level of diagnostics is not where we want to be, where we can get a highly sensitive point-of-care diagnostic in order to diagnose cases. So you have to do things the ancient way, which is uh, now that we'll have transmission in multiple areas, just closing our borders may not be adequate. It means uh, limiting, uh, uh, congregating in crowded places. Uh, it, it means frequent hand washing. It means uh, uh, avoiding uh, areas where you think there might be high levels of transmission. And that's easier said than done, right? Because that may uh, mean decreasing the amount of contact we have with people at the workplace, encouraging people to work and work from home more. But of course, if you're actually making stuff, if you're doing manufacturing, that's you really can't do that. So this is going to have to be looked at on a country by country basis and on a, uh, a even a county basis in the case of the right. United States or similar levels of governance. 